we are back <laughs> for how long we never know but guys let's just appreciate this time together we never know when this we went uh, I want to start this video by congratulating myself and you guys as well for winning my imaginary prize of the most inconsistent channel in this whole community guys how, how awesome is that <laughs> guys uh, let's start the, the actual video so after almost a year if you're not aware of that I was working on um, a partnership with packet publishing we wrote a book all about making online multiplayer games with good old four so guys how awesome is that we are here to help you build that amazing MMORPG that you that you've been dreaming about for this whole career <laughs> for how long I don't know since you started working with computers for probably so after almost a year the book is starting its pre-order campaign so in this video we are going to to go through the the book's content we are going to to read through the table of contents and i'm going to introduce very briefly each chapter so you understand the value that we are about to to release in this world and guys this will be uh, amazing i i i really see you guys creating the most amazing games connecting people together Th this is the this is the thing about this book is helping you bring and connect people together in in games and allow them to share to have a, a shared experience and build stuff together so uh, imagine something like maybe roblox or minecraft or anything more amazing than that like among us or something like this so uh this is a, a dream coming true so to see what you will create with this knowledge but with all these adults <laughs> without them without any delays let's get to the video this is the cover of the book um guys i'm i'm so proud of that for real i'm i'm very proud of that let's move on the social guide to creating multiplayer games with god of four Harness the power of Godot Engine Gili Script Network API to connect players in multiplayer games. This is the thing, guys. Connect people. Use this knowledge to connect people. Uh, let's see. We have all this stuff here. I want to dedicate this book to God, who has always been with me, blessing me with strength, faith, and determination to take faithful steps through this journey. Let this book be a blessing that will allow people to make amazing creative endeavors. You guys will create amazing stuff. The foreword is by Nathan, Nathan Lovato from GD Quest. I'm very happy. We are like I, I really consider Nathan to be one of my of my friends. Uh, I we are not working together on GD Quest anymore. We we grow apart. We grew apart, but I'm always like following his steps. And I'm actually very, very glad about how Godot is going, where Godot is going. We are having some, some very fruitful uh, results uh, during this year and the previous years as well. So we have like uh, my about session, the reviewers about session, and finally we have the table of contents. Let's see this. Guys, the first thing that you need to know about networking is how to make a handshake. So it's essentially a, a protocol that computers do in order to establish a communication protocol. Like, hey, I don't trust you. Who are you? And the other computer say, hey, I'm this guy here. How we are going to exchange messages here? So they establish a protocol and well, the first chapter of the book, setting up a server, is all about that. So, hey, let's start a network. Hey, let's collab in this. How can we do that? We are going to use the Inet Multiplayer Peer class to make this at this very first moment. But later on, we learn what is a UDP protocol because this is also important just so you can see the difference and the value that the, the new API provides to you because Without this high-level API, guys, you have no idea of a headache that will be to connect computers into a network. So, guys, please congratulate and thank Fabio Alessandrelli for making all these improvements into the good old um, high-level and, and actually developing, if I'm not mis mistaken, the good old high-level 
uh, network API. So this is the person that should take all the credits for that for you. But let's go back to the to the book. So this first chapter is all about that, how to set up a server and, comp and making a comparison, introducing the, the protocols. And well, this is the, the very introdu introducing uh, part of the book. Then we actually learn how to send and receive data using the UDP protocol, because after you understand the, <laughs> the hustle <laughs> that is to make this, uh, you will understand the actual value of this high-level API. So here we are going to understand what is the JSON format because we are actually focusing this chapter on serializing and deserializing data through the network because we can just pass objects around in the network because objects are like memory references and two computers don't have the, the, the same memory address so you, can, you can't just pass objects around. Uh, but instead, you pass the relevant data through the through the network, so we can recreate a game state or an object state on, across the the network, so on other players' peers or other players' instances of this object. And this is what we learn here: how to make this to serialize an object uh, into JSON format and pass this JSON data through the internet to the network using the packet peer UDP and the UDP server classes and for that uh, the, the whole thing behind that is to make an authentication uh, an authentication system so players will be like hey I'm user one this is my password and the server will be like hmm doubt it let's check this so we have like a fake database with users and passwords here uh, the whole idea of this book is that you will like wear the hat of a network engineer from a imaginary, if yeah, a imaginary uh, indie game studio. So they are going to introduce you to the projects. They are going to make the onboard process. And this first part of the book is all about uh, seeing, uh, introducing you to the technologies. Okay. Um, and then after the player authenticate the the credentials, they are going to receive a token so they can maintain the session throughout the, the game. So whenever the game needs to check out if the player is still the player that they validated so that they authenticate it to see if the credentials is uh, correct, they are going to check out for the token and the player will like, hey, this is the token that you provide me. So yeah, I can I can move on with this play session. And the server will be like, hmm, okay. Then on chapter three, we are going to make a lobby to get the players together. Uh, the whole concept here is that we are going to move away from the UDP <laughs> approach so we can understand, now that we understand how <laughs> how much of a headache is to use the, the, the low level um, protocols, we are going to finally actually handle stuff with the inet approach. So we are going to remake this authentication system using inet. And for that, we are going to use RPCs, which guys is one of the most amazing technologies that I've seen in my life. Because it's basically like if you are making a a call through a function into an object that is not on your computer, <laughs> like another person's computer, and many other peers' computer, and even on the server. So yeah, this is this is amazing. And by the end of this chapter, we are going to allow players to log in and have both avatars, so one player and the other player avatar, uh, together, side by side. Uh, and after that, we create an online chat. Uh, the whole thing about the, the chapter four is that we understand uh, how data exchange and we see like reliable and unreliable packets. So. If they should, if packets should arrive in order or not order, or if they should arrive at all, so we understand that because ideally chat message should always arrive in the same order in all peers, right? To avoid mis miscommunication, and we are going to introduce here the idea of channels. We don't use this throughout the book, but it's good to to have this right here because. Um, since this is one of those instances where we do need that the, the data arrive reliably in order, we use a separate channel 
so that all the other channels are free for data for other data transmission, especially unordered uh, or unreliable data transmission, because this channel will be idling for all the packets to arrive in, in the order. So if another packet reaches this channel and it's not a packet that it would be it, it would be expecting, it will be like, nope, I need to wait this one to arrive in this order so I can process you right now, I can process this request right now. And this can create some bottlenecks. And this whole chapter is about avoiding these bottlenecks. So we use one specific channel to transmit the chat message and allow the, the other channels to be used for all the other things, right? And after that, we enter in part two. Remember, you are the network engineer of a, yeah, imaginary game development studio. So this is the part where you will be introduced to the, uh, to the projects. The projects are like currently local multiplayer projects. And your role here is to take this local multiplayer and make it an online multiplayer game. So you are going to introduce the multiplayer online multiplayer mechanics, right? The first thing that we start with is an online quiz game. So we can understand, hey, how we can synchronize game states across peers, how we can allow peers to, to make changes into another peer game state. So if a player replies the quiz question correctly, other players can't answer the, the quiz anymore. So they will lock down the, the, the answers. And then we, we have kind of like a pseudo uh, turn system, but we actually dive into uh, turns in the next chapter, which is about building an online checkers game. And this one is very cool because we build, uh, this, this whole book is about building up knowledge until you reach out a point where you're going to create something very complex, uh, which is in chapter nine. We are going to talk about that later. So uh, on chapter six, we are going to introduce the, the concepts of the checkers and how we can like serialize some data and transmit it with very small data packs. And we are going to also understand how we can prevent players from making changes into objects they don't, they are not uh, entitled to. So on a checkers game, we have your pieces and the other players' pieces. And how do you prevent this player from messing around with your pieces? Because they will be with the same game on the machine. So this uh, this one here works more around uh, the multiplayer authority over some objects, so over some nodes. It is a very cool, uh, it's a very cool knowledge to have as well to understand. Then we have the the online pawn game, which is where we introduce the multiplayer synchronizer, which is a node that allows us to just say, hey, I want you to synchronize this, this, and this property across the network, so I don't want to know how you are going to do that, but just do it for me. And it's very, very cool. And we also learned that this multiplayer synchronizer also can update the other peers on a process base, so we can leave it on the idle process or, or the physics process. And you are going to see how this works uh, throughout the, the sub-readings of this chapter. Uh, creating an online, uh, the chapter eight, creating an online co-op platform is a very cool uh, project as well. So here we have like a puzzle platformer where we have some crates and players need to pick up these crates and maneuver throughout the, the levels um, layout, right? So we have players that can jump on top of each other or on top of uh, these crates and we have to, to like move these crates around so that they can move around the, the level and suppress these physics-based puzzles. And the whole idea behind this, this uh, chapter is that how do we allow any players to log in and play together? So we have like the lobby and there can be like three or three or, or four or five players joining the same session. So how we handle that? We have it in, on the previous project, which is the Pong and the Checkers and the Quiz. We have like just two players playing. So how do we handle that? And in this channel, in this chapter, is where we introduce the multiplayer spawner class, which is basically meant for that, for creating instances of objects dynamically on other players, uh, on other peers' instances of the game. And finally, guys, we reached chapter nine. This one is, I, I mean, the whole book is 
basically around this project here. This is the, the basics, the essential you need to understand to make an online, a massive multiplayer online game. So here we are making an adventure game, but if you understand the underlying principles behind all the, 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 the techniques that we are using here, you understand that you can make database requests so you can update data on the player, on the server side, on, on the client side as well, and retrieve this data. And you can maintain the, the player's progress throughout the game. So here we are working with quests. So it's an adventure, right? So the, the very basics of adventure games is about missions and quests. But if you understand that you can do that, you can make uh, another database for like the player's position or the player's character update. So like the player's status or attributes or stuff like this or skills in skill tree. So if you understand the, the underlying principle, we are not going to go through everything here. We are just presenting principles here. But if you understand this, you can like scale this up to make an online, a massive multiplayer online RPG if you want. So the principles are all here. Then we enter in a, the third part of the book, optimizing the online experience. So we had just made a very cool project here. And this in the game studio said, hey, we are expecting many players to be playing this specific game. So we need to optimize this experience. How can we decrease the chances that this experience will basically skyrocket in lag or latency or like it will require much uh, a huge infrastructure. So part three will take this project, the, the project from chapter nine and optimize it to the <laughs> ground. Uh, so we have we introduce the in chapter 10 we introduce the the burger the debugging and profiling tools that that Google provide to us so we are going heavily into introducing the the Google debugger so we go through all the tabs that we have available and then we focus on the network profiler and the monitor tab because using the monitor tab we can create custom monitors so we can monitor any 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 kind of data that we want in our game so this is a, a very awesome tool to have in mind and to master. Guys, take this chapter and master this monitor tab because you can like see how much damage the player can deal in a whole play session or in 20 minutes of game or how many times players are dying into a specific boss or into a specific level. So you can gather all this data and fine tune the player experience. This is not meant just for like optimizing the network. Besides, uh, we are focused on optimizing the network here. This is like a blow, a, a mind blowing knowledge that you can use to make like, let's say, um, if you want to make like play sessions with your peers to play test your game and like gather data about, hey, where the people are, are dying? How many times the uh, how many times people are using this this weapon or shooting uh, how many enemies players are actually killing so we can optimize and reduce the amount of enemies around the level guys this is for game designers the most important tool that you can have on your tool belt but let's move on so on chapter 11 we actually optimize stuff so we with chapter 10 we we notice we we assess the, the potential bottlenecks that we have on our game. And then on chapter 11, we actually optimize it. So we decrease the, the asteroid sinking count. So there is no need for asteroids to keep uh, the, the astronaut, the asteroid uh, multiplayer synchronizers to keep sending update requests if the asteroids doesn't actually change, don't actually change the position. So we just need to send one request for update. So this is very important. And after that, we are uh, we also seeing compressing data which is very important as well so we dec even if we have like massive amount of data being transmitted through the network we can compress it and decompress it using the inet connection class and on chapter 12 we are going to implement <laughs> this one was very expected uh implementing lag compensation techniques so we pick up players and we say hey if we are playing just on your end yeah, the game will never be lagging, uh, but if you like play with other players, they will be lagging as well. So let's move on this 
responsibility to the server and start implementing lag compensation techniques. So we are going to see the tripod of lag compensation, which is interpolation, prediction and extrapolation. These are the, the, the tripod of techniques that you need to know to implement lag compensation. And finally, in the final chapter, we have caching data to decrease bandwidth, which basically is about like allowing players with a, a poor infrastructure to play your game. So you reduce the bandwidth so other players can play your game and have access to your game as well. Here we introduce the HTTP request. It's pretty late on the book, but it's also a very valuable uh, knowledge. So throughout the book, guys, there is no... <laughs> There is no point where you're going to be like bored. You'll always be learning something new and engaging. Uh, so we use the HTTP request node to download some images from the internet and make some cache on players um, on players' computers or so on players' machine. This will decrease the 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 bandwidth because now you are going to have this image saved on the player's machine, and if the image is there, there is no need to keep downloading stuff. So this is all. Uh, this is what this chapter is all about. And after that, guys, your experience is over. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be equipped with all the knowledge you need to create mm, the most amazing online experiences that you need, that you want to create with Godot Engine. So that's it. I'm thrilled to see what you are going to do with all this knowledge. So you can make the pre-order of the book in the link. It will be in the description and the pinned comment as well. So you can pre-order it on Amazon. And guys, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I can't describe it. Uh, let ju let's just finish as we always do. Keep developing, and until the next time, see you later.